welcome to City Life. It's really good to have you with us today. Back in from the snow, it's good to be back in the studio. Now, today in the programme, we get the latest update from the New Zealand Fire Service. Dr Nick Page talks about the developmental orthopaedic disease in dogs. The mainland press is out today, so we catch up with the editor. And we talk movies with John Hunter. But first on the programme, our Mayor, Bob Parker. Good G'day. to be here. Nice to be here. It's warm in here. I know. Which is good. Out yeah. Outside. Yeah, That's yeah. good to see so you've got your coffee in your hand. Got my coffee, got my uh, snow gear. On, got my snow boots, got the thermals. Yeah, what a winter wonderland we've had. <laughs> Can you believe it? I, I keep sort of waiting for the the sound of you know buzzing in the air as the locusts descend because we've had everything else so far. Don't scare us. No, it's all right. <clears throat> we have no low cost forecasts coming. So. All right, that's good. Forecast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's look at this draft Central City Plan. Mm. What's the feedback been? It was released Tremendous. last week. Tremendous. Really, yep. really positive. And uh, I was just being interviewed this morning by uh, someone on Radio New Zealand and off here. They said, oh. One of the staff at our newsroom is uh, locating down to Christchurch and she's really excited because she wants to be part of what's happening and she can see that it's a city that she would love her kids to grow up in. And I thought, well, that is one of the big roles of what we have done to get to this point. Our community have said, look, here are all of the things that we would love to see as elements of our city. Now, you try and bring it together, guys. And uh, what it's meant to do besides creating a great place to live, is to send a really positive message. So instead of someone saying on the phone to me this morning, look, I'm never going to come to Christchurch, mate, I don't know why you stay there, they're saying, you know, that's wonderful. We'd love to be part of that. So on that level, it's been enormously successful. Now, it's the beginning of a consultation phase. And there are going to be issues that people like and don't like and they're going to want to know more about and they're going to push us on. But I think what we've achieved with the guidance of the community is putting a positive document that has a vision for the future that people want to be part of. Mm. And, uh, you know, if we just come out and said, oh, yeah, we're just going to sweep the streets and, <clears throat> you know, fix up what was there before and plant a few more trees, people would be going, well, <laughs> you know, what about the vision? Mm. So the vision that was given to us by our community for what they wanted and, and what we believe we can afford and we can do is there and it's open for comment, and I'm thrilled with the feedback. OK. Right, um, we're actually having some special segments on City Life going mm. into the council. Uh, the first one was with you yesterday, mm -hmm. and we'll carry on that later on the programme. Mm. What, what's, what's the reason behind this, being part of our programme, yeah. having the council explain the draft mm. central city plan? Well, I think if you look at the share and idea thing, it was inspirational. It's never happened in the world before that 106,000 ideas came from a community for a rebuild of a city. And again, that really hasn't happened. Uh, in our lifetimes. So we've been driven by a very strong engagement with the community and it's really important to keep that up and it's really important for people to understand the process, you know, not as you know, I read the odd letter where someone just goes, you know, light rail, the mayor's dream, oh, you know, he's going to bankrupt us forever, blah, blah, blah. And it's not about the mayor's dream, you know, it's about what we a, as a community want to do mm. and we need to look at expensive items like that and say, well, is there actually an argument? Could we do this and how will it grow the city that we need to face the future and I, I really believe strongly we should be optimistic and positive and if we don't think like that and if in a sense we don't stand together as a community the world is watching mm. and if they see a divided community that, that can't pull an idea together they can't actually step bravely into the future mm. then I, I think we'll have a real struggle to survive as a city in the years ahead mm. because it is I mean it's about now but it's more about the generations ahead isn't it, it? Is, uh, I, I did stir up one night, I went to a Rotary Club meeting and the average age was you know, probably like me, sort of you know, late 50s and higher. And, uh, and I said, you know, nobody under 25 in a way should be involved in designing the city. And there was a stunned silence and I said, well, when you think about it, what is the city really for? Yes, we want it to be the place that we love and want to live in. Of course we do. Mm. But we really want a place for uh, our children and our families to have a future. Mm. And there's nothing worse than growing old and knowing that all of your children and all of your families are having to go everywhere else in the world just to get a living. Mm. So one of the things that us older generation want is we want a city that will hold our young people, young people like yourself and others who see this as a place where they can have a career and a future and mm. raise a family and, and commit to something. Mm. And we're at the beginning of our history. We're not at the end of it. Mm. And so you need to have some big ideas and you need to look out mm. with a bit of optimism and, and, and feel that you're part of creating something exactly. that will be a legacy, mm. we hope, for hundreds and hundreds and 
hundreds of years into the future. Because who can say that around the world that they were part of the exactly. history of the building of a, of a city? Exactly. Now, coming, the, I mean, the reason for this draft central city plan mm. is because of the earthquakes. Mm. Now, a year on from our first big one, mm. um, September 4, but Cabinet's going to be meeting in Christchurch. Yeah, isn't it? That's 5. a lovely gesture. Really, yeah. really love them for that. Good on them. And I think the government's been, uh, you know, putting all politics aside. I mean, their role is we put them in there to make sure that we, as a country, are protected, mm -hmm. uh, that we have protections within, and if bad things happen, that we find a way to stand together and do something. And I think this gesture for the government coming down to hold a cabinet meeting here in the city is a very strong symbol of solidarity for New Zealand. But it's great for us because we get a chance to pitch to the whole cabinet and talk to them about the issues and situations that they, as a very powerful group in our country, will be making the uh, legislative decisions around. Mm. So it's really good opportunity, but I love the gesture. Mm. OK. Youth unemployment rates throughout the country aren't very good. Mm. What are we doing in Christchurch about it? Well, it's a big problem, and it's, a, you know, it's exacerbated in our city at the moment because we're in that doldrum period where most of us are still waiting to hear about the land on which our houses are uh, placed to see if we can get ahead. And the central city rebuild until we get the plan in place and until we get that demolition work and the red zone fences down, we can't go ahead. Mm. So there's lots of opportunities for employment coming. And I think what we need to do, and it is being done, and there's room for more of it, and it's one of the roles that I think Sarah as an organisation really need to be pushing, and that is around apprenticeship schemes and training schemes and pre-apprenticeship schemes. Now, there are a number of organisations in the city that are stepping up to that. And what we need to do is take advantage of this opportunity to get our young people into some sort of a training program. Mm -hmm. There will be need for lots of workers as we rebuild Christchurch and lots of planners and uh, lots of people throughout the business uh, structure in the city at all levels. So there are opportunities and I think the biggest opportunity and the biggest challenge is we're going to have a very strong economy here over the next few years. We've got to turn that into a lasting economy for mm. the city. So the GDP will go boom through the roof and we'll all feel great for two or three years, there'll be lots of work. But we've got to turn that opportunity into lasting wealth, lasting jobs and a strong future for the city. So let's get those programs up and running. CPIT are doing them. Mm -hmm. Government's funding some. We need plenty of that. OK, now finally, now we are friends on Facebook. Yeah. And, um, so, I've been so your face <laughs> pops up on my Facebook page sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now I've been checking out your Facebook page yeah. this morning. I mean, yeah. you've got more than 4,000 friends there. I'm right up to my Coming sort of up, limit. Yeah, and I, limit. I've, what I've got to do is actually turn it not so much now into just my personal page, but into a kind of a a page, as they say, and mm. then I can take more people. Because I've got over a 1,000 people mm. waiting. Who, who want, waiting in the wings to be friends, mm. and I just need some time to get, get organised and do that, Kaneta. So uh, it's, you know, I love getting on there because it's mm. a chance to really talk directly to people. Exactly, and that's, that's what I was going to mention. Now, people write on your page and they're mm. wanting to know answers about mm. things, mm. and you actually take the time to mm. write the, the answers mm. back. I mean, surely this must take a bit of time out of the day. Does yeah. the City Council offer this sort of service? Well, we do offer a number of services like that, and if you go to the City City Council uh, website, you can actually go to the Mayor's page and you can ask questions there and people use that. People email me directly, they get my email off uh, the Council pages again and just shoot something through to mm -hmm. me. And when something turns up on my Facebook page that is really complicated or sometimes a little bit of like a political point score or something, I direct it back off to the office so we can get the real information because this is really a social site. It's mm. where I have a chance to engage mm. with people. But if I can give a simple answer, mm. I will. And I'm loving the contact. And uh, yeah, I find a bit of space to do it, usually in the evening. Sort of late at night before you go to bed, you've got to check the page to make sure someone hasn't dropped a clangor in the middle of it that you're going to wake <laughs> yeah. up to. Uh, and that doesn't really happen very yeah. often. And it's been incredibly supportive. And for Joe and me, we've you know, like a lot of people, been non-stop since the 4th of uh, September last year. Mm. And there are, there are times when you feel, you don't feel so good, you feel a bit lonely or a bit sort of down about stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I flip onto the old Facebook page and someone will send a lovely positive message through, you know, keep it up. And we all need that. Mm. So uh, I've really enjoyed that side of it. I have a bunch of friends out there and it's great. Yeah, all right. Bob, really good to have you on the programme. Nice to be with you. It's time for us to catch up with the Director of Strategic Redevelopments, Christchurch, Dan Coward. Morning. Now that's your new title. Actually, it's not even new. No, it's, it's been around for a bit now. Sort of been in the role now three, four months, I think it is. 
since there was just after the earthquake. earthquake yeah. So area commander no more? No more, no, and we've appointed one. Oh, you have? So Christchurch now has a new area commander, John Graham, and he started his post in looking after and running and leading the Christchurch Brigade. So uh, he's in place. Okay. And my role, yeah, look, straight after the earthquake, really. And the months are sort of blurred into one with the role, what we're trying to achieve and, and what we've also achieved already. So, yes, yeah, some good milestones already. So what does it mean, the Director of Strategic Redevelopments, Christchurch? What does it mean? Well, there's, there's really two key parts to it. One is redeveloping our infrastructure. And that's around our stations that have been damaged. But it's also around coming up with a new way of how do we use our money uh, better service delivery and better outcomes for the community, uh, better outcomes for the government and our partner agencies. So looking at all of that and saying, OK, do we rebuild a fire station like we've always done, uh, where, where it's just us? Do we look at it and say, hey, we need to be with ambulance? And do we look at it and say, hey, we actually need to be with a multitude of different agencies? And in some parts that may be appropriate that we just have a fire station. There'll be some that uh, absolutely lend to being co-located with St John Ambulance, for example. And there'll be some that are in key communities where we can actually say, hey, we've got a leadership role with community engagement and we're able to set up a community-based centre type station whereby the community can interact with us directly mm. at our work site. OK. Well, let's just move on to what's the most current thing, because you have been in that role for, well, yeah. as you say, a couple of months. Snow, that seems the biggest thing on our mind at the moment. What sort of calls do you have this week? Yeah, so this week's been very much focused around leaking roofs. Uh, not just in the earthquake-damaged uh, suburbs. There have been some areas where, believe it or not, tiled roofs, the snow during that blizzard-type evening, the snow's been able to force itself up and under the tiles. So. Mm -hmm. We've had people call us and we've removed snow from their rooftops, wow. inside their roof voids. Uh, for some people it's been about the leaking water that's been a result of the snow, warming mm -hmm. up and melting. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of, lot of those sorts of calls have occurred. We've had the odd ac accident that we've attended to. Uh, again, most people seem to have listened to the advice given by police and drove, driven sensibly, mm. but there's been the odd person that hasn't. Mm. Uh, and circumstances have led to the crash that they've been involved in. So we've had a few of those. Okay. And we've had the odd sprinkler head burst due to the frozen pipes and the coldness of the water, but very few of them. Okay. Not, not something that we expect many of. All right. Um, and the other fire calls this week? No, nothing of significance. It's actually a gain. It's almost like people, because they're aware the cold snap was coming, they've stocked up on the right supplies and stores. Mm -hmm. They haven't done anything silly. We haven't been called out to a, a multitude of fires that have been caused by candles because of no power or heating. Mm -hmm. So people have been really sensible in their approach, which you know we're really pleased about. Okay. Now, last week we spoke about the um, firefighters in the unions yes. striking. Where's that at, at the moment? So they're continuing with the industrial action, and we're continuing to uh, promote the fact that we're willing to sit down and negotiate and talk with them. Mm. Uh, but at this point, they're still continuing with their industrial action, and. So the, the main things that are impacted upon are those proactive preventative measures which are around the fitting of smoke alarms, the education and those sorts of approaches. But still responding to leaking roofs and the snow related calls over the last few days. All right, now the thing that we spoke about, la another thing we spoke about last week was you set up a new email system. Tell yes. me about this system. Great, so the, the email is chch feedback or chicha feedback mm -hmm. at fire.org.nz. Mm. Uh, so an opportunity for people to tell us, you know, what do they think we should be thinking about? And I have to mention a couple that we've uh, received this week that have been really fantastic. One from Bernadette, and she uh, emailed us and sort of suggested that what she'd like to see is a community-based approach whereby education lessons, fire safety advice could be delivered on station to the community. Mm. Uh, she attended one of our uh, presentations during the earthquake. Uh, where we talked about some of the fire safety measures people could have in their homes during the earthquake. Great. And so, look, she's given us some great feedback. Yeah. And, yeah, we are looking at um, how, do we, how do we develop those stations into the future that have very much community engagement, education and advice as the main focus. So that was a great piece of um, feedback. Yeah. Uh, another one that we got uh, from a chat called Paul was around the co-location, you know, ambulance and fire being together. And he'd obviously seen uh, that occurring in Invercargill where both the ambulance and the fire are in one building. And it's great. It's great to know that the public are sort of thinking those things. They're, they're the same thoughts that I'm having that our organisation's having. So it's really neat to know that we're aligned, mm. that we're not completely off on one track. Mm. So I just really encourage people, give us some feedback, give us your ideas and comments. Um, it's, it's really important that 
before we go and build anything, we make sure that we have both the community's interests at heart, mm. our partner agencies also, and, and the ability to, to deliver on it. Okay, so us in the community here in Christchurch and Canterbury, we can give you some Absolutely. feedback, we can write to you, chchfeedback um, at fire.org.nz. Fantastic. Dan, really good to see you. See you next Thank week. You. After the break, we catch up with Nick from Rolleston Vets. You're back with City Life, and it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Nick Page back to the program. Good to have you here. Great, thanks. Now, I'm just wondering if you had any feedback last week about your suggestion that if there are tomcats straying in the neighbourhood, the patient, people should trap them and get them neutered. No, I haven't. Are really? you trying to stimulate some <laughs> Some feedback, because we haven't either, so I'm thinking it's, it was a good idea. Oh, uh, well. Um, no, I haven't got any feedback, but I did. I remember I did specify that it was my personal view. That was your view. personal view, and that's why I was thinking that people would contact you directly about it. No, not yet. Okay. <clears throat> right, um, also I'm just wondering how you feel about if people email in some questions about their animals, their pets. Fantastic. Would you be happy to answer More them? More than happy. Okay, bring, well... Bring on the questions. Really, yeah. I've got a question myself. Mm -hmm. and my, I think my mum probably knew I was going to ask this because she's got two very naughty dogs. They're very boisterous. Mm -hmm. And every time I go over there, they just want to, me to take them for a walk and they're always barking and jumping on me. What do I do? Are there such things as downers for dogs? <laughs> I could get crucified on a number of points here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, um, it, there's behavioural issues. Um, there are a number of causes or reasons behind these, these problems. And believe it or not, in times gone by, they have been one of the leading causes of euthanising pets. Um, so now we know a lot more about how behaviour forms and how to modify it, <clears throat> there's a few things that we can do. And what you describe with your parents' dogs um, is just one behavioural problem in a whole array of issues that we do see, um, as far as obsessive compulsive problems or separation anxiety, aggression. The best thing that has happened in recent times in regard to uh, changing these poor or bad behaviours has been the, the onset of puppy schools or puppy, puppy classes. Mm. And that enables dogs or puppies to socialise and develop good um, social social behaviours uh, at a time before their sort of brain has already wired itself. And so taking dogs to puppy classes is just an excellent idea. And we have, we, we have so few problems with the dogs that have had puppy, mm. puppy schools. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we have other issues, especially around earth, the earthquake dilemmas and things we've had recently, where we have anxiety-related disorders. <clears throat> and um, these problems need to be trained out, so the, the best approach to those sort of issues is when we get involved with a behaviourist as well, that sort of retrains the dog. And sometimes, on some occasions, we will use some medications, mm -hmm. uh, some psychotropic medications, very much the exception rather than the rule, but we do, we do use some anti-anxiety medications on occasion, and usually just in the period where the dog's being retrained. Mm -hmm. Um, coming specifically to your parents' <laughs> dog's problem, <laughs> the issue there is that these dogs, I think, need to be rewarded for being relaxed and showing good behaviour. So mm. it's very easy to get in the trap that these little things, they jump up and they're wanting attention and they're craving yeah. attention, and so you give it to them and you in effect you start rewarding that behaviour. Yeah, I do. And so what you know, so <laughs> what happens is you need to really reward these dogs for being relaxed or uh, you know, if you see them sitting quietly then then make a fuss of them. Okay. Not the other way around. Right. Sometimes it's very, very good to make sure that they know their place in the family surroundings and so sometimes it's good to ensure that if you're going to feed them, for instance, that they do something for you before you feed them, such okay. as sit down quietly. Okay. And so that just um, reinforces their position in the social structure of the home. Okay. Another, good, another good thing sometimes is to <clears throat> try and always maintain a height dominance over, over dogs such okay. as that. If they're, um, if they're unneutered, neutering especially male dogs yeah. is just the greatest thing to get them to to be trained. They have been neutered they and been. yeah so I was hoping that was going to actually help them but you know what we've only got two more minutes left so oh, we could just stay with behaviour. Well let's stay with behaviour. Okay, 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 so. so yeah they have been neutered. I thought that would make them 
a bit better, mm -hmm. better controlled. Easier to train, I would say, because their minds are less likely to be off off the task mm. at hand. Um, but if this is becoming a real, real problem and it's and it's deemed to be not anxiety related and just poor behaviour, then you know we really you, you probably really need to be looking at um, training or a behaviourist or some some way of. Uh, training these dogs out of this behaviour. In actual fact, a first step might be for them to contact their local veterinary clinic <laughs> and, um, and maybe one of the nurses. Often there's a nurse that's more involved in behaviour than, than mm. others and they can just give them a few pointers on the telephone. Okay. Even, so. Excellent, that's good. So basically what we've learnt today is that I shouldn't give them as much attention as they're craving and just ignore them? Having, I just feel bad no, ignoring no, but them. No, having pets so isn't about ignoring them, is it? But what I'm saying is that in an interim period for, you know, four to six weeks, maybe it's a good option to start rewarding them for acceptable behaviours mm. and making their reward... So take them for a walk when they've done something good okay. or um, rather than you doing what they're asking you mm. to do, maybe you should reward them for them doing what you're asking them to do. Is that a good way to put yeah, it? Yeah, that is a really good way to put it, because they know that when, I'm, when I come <coughs> over, that they're going to get a walk, and mm -hmm. so that they are sort of, so I'm like, oh, they're driving me crazy. So I'm mix it up a, a bit, connect it, right. like, mix it up and say, like, you know, maybe you don't immediately take them for a walk, maybe you ignore them for 10 minutes, and then out of the blue, you take them for a walk. So mm. they're not becoming reliant on a certain routine. Okay. Um, yeah, so just mix it up Well, there we go. Little... That's my problem for today. <laughs> so if you too have an issue with your animal, email me, kineta at ctv.co.nz, and hopefully Nick can answer it. Yeah, All right, easy. back after the break with the editor of the Mainland Press, Chris Tobin. You're back with City Life and the editor of the Mainland Press, Chris Tobin, is with us. Now, no papers this week because they're all out. They've gone, yeah. They've gone. <laughs> so popular this week. It is, yes. Um, snow and everything. I don't know what it is. People at home reading, they want yeah. to read stuff, so they grab papers. Yeah, so what's the good thing? So, we can show you the front page of the Mainland Press today. Now, it looks like a, a new masthead, is it? Or a new, different colour? Um, or just a bit of variation I there, uh, Kineta, uh, nothing new or dr drastic, it's still the main masthead, main name press. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, this front page story, it's about the uh, draft of the city plan, uh, the uh, rebuild plan for the mm -hmm. central city. Um, that's, feedback from the street is, people love it, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite amazing. Um, we did a, a, a poll was posted on Facebook's Rise Up Christchurch, which we run sort of in conjunction with main name mm -hmm. press. 82% uh, said they lo loved the uh, draft city plan. 13% um, said bits were OK. 1% said they loathed it. And 4% said, uh, what did they say? Um, they don't care. Don't care. 82%. That's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Sure quite is. Quite amazed by that, actually. Um, so that was from the Rise Up Christchurch um, Facebook page poll? Yes, it was. That's um, amazing. It is. It's Christchurch Mayor Bob Parker said uh, it was really solid feedback from people right across the spectrum. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite exciting. Okay. As you can see on the front, we've got um, people on the street and how they viewed it. Again, positive. Um, but as you may note, also the uh, business community are a wee bit concerned about the restrictions on height, you know, as far mm. as the numbers of stories they can put in there. It might mm. uh, create a few issues. But um, overall, very positive, and it's good for the city. We need a bit of a lift at this time, and especially with the weather the way it is, mm. you know. Exactly. Those images look great, don't they? They it's sure do. Remind us of summer. Actually. So this was this montage, this photo. Can we go back to that, Michael? Just with the um, with the picture. Is this something that your the production staff at Mainland Press put together? No, no, no. It came from council. This is amazing. It's, it's a really good. So that would be what? That's just a central city. It is. Recognise yes. some the of those. Cathedral bits. Square. They're going to put a small park in the or proposed to put a small park in the square. And of course, you know, there's going to be proposing light rail out to the university and around the city. There's a lot of exciting things in it. Mm. Um, I guess the issue is who pays for it and um, whether the business community board uh, really come on board to support it. Mm, right. um, so there are a few obstacles there and of course the continuing, dare I say it, earthquake risk. So that's, that's a factor, you know, the insurance industry mm. and the banking industry, they have to be satisfied, you know, that, that you know, mm. things are OK for the whole thing to go ahead. All right. So this is the but main story in it the It is, main yes. So, uh, and of course we go into the snow thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting like past snow, seen. sorry, <laughs> past Aren't we? Yeah. Totally. Once yeah. was enough, but <laughs> now we've got it again. So I believe spring is coming, but... Uh, yeah. Well, I, b I believe that September brings, September brings spring, but who really knows? 
Um, we've got some a few interesting stories here. Um, Gina McKenzie, our reporter for the eastern suburbs, she uh, came across some elderly Avondale residents who were having to take taxis to bus stops, believe it or not, because oh. of the... <laughs> it's not very satisfactory, but um, apparently, you know, Burwood Pegasus Community Board Chairwoman Linda Stewart said Environment Canterbury had told her a bus service could be running in the area for the next month, but, you know, pretty inconvenient for mm. those poor old elderly people, but never sure mind. Is. Um, another story here about um, there's a high performance New Zealand high performance centre based at QE2. There's only two in this country, one in Christchurch, one in Auckland. Like everyone, or well, not like everyone, but a large number of people, they're blown out by the February 22 earthquake. Mm. They're hoping to go to Jelly Park and build, an, uh, build a $2 million facility. So that's going to be interesting. They're going to council for approval for that. Um, so on Maester, who's a former Olympic gold medalist uh, in hockey, he's mm -hmm. uh, been the driving force behind that. So that's quite an interesting right, story, and yes, we'll be keeping definitely. an eye on that. Right. Over in Littleton, um, another guy who's come up with another way of raising funds. Uh, he's a carver, Brent Rowe. He's done this beautiful, pretty, I can't show you the image, it's a beautiful carving of a mirror, Maori carving. Mm. And uh, he's going to auction that to raise money for the repair of the town's fire station. So it's a great wow. gesture by him. What a great gesture. Uh, I did a story on Crichton Cobbers. I don't know whether you, do you know about Crichton Cobbers. It's Tell a, me more. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, it's a well-known like gym in, in Christchurch, actually, and it's uh, been operating since about the 1920s. Mm. And it was set up to, you know, uh, keep kids off the street, basically. In the post-First World War era, there were a lot of kids around, I imagine, without fathers because they died in the war. Um, so that's how the, how the club came to be, and uh, you know, for all it's, ever since, it's been doing a great job keeping the you know kids occupied in sport, like wrestling, boxing, and other sort of activities. Mm -hmm. And dare I say it, on February 22, everything sort of was blown apart again. Um, they're going to have to go back to scratch and find new facilities. So they're making a bit of appeal to the public to get behind them to support them. And I've done an article on them, and I encourage people to you know help these people because they do a great job okay. for the community. All right, Chris, thank you so much for coming on the program. Okay, if you do find one of these pieces of gold, the mainland press, pick it up because um, they're going out the door very quickly this week. Where can we pick them up, by the way? Uh, supermarkets, well, they get home delivered, but dare I say it, they've been restricted a bit because of the snow. Mm. Um, supermarkets, service stations, dairies, just look out for that great uh, mast and you'll find it's it. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Chris, thanks for coming to the programme. Thanks, Camille. After the break, we find out more about the draft Central City Plan. back with City Life. Now as I chatted about with Mayor Bob Parker earlier in the programme, for the next five weeks in City Life we've got a segment where we go to the council to find out more about the draft Central City Plan. Here's Emily Cooper with Mayor Parker. The low rise factor, is this economical? I, I believe it is economical but those are some of the things that we're going to be testing through with the uh, property owners and the business community and that will be one question. So we've put a lot of time and effort into uh, an economic study with a number of different groups. We've used stakeholder groups like business owners, also uh, some of the agencies that uh, look after tenancy and managing buildings, some of the real estate companies and some of the engineering people as well to get a feel for whether or not the height levels and limits that we are suggesting are economic. And the evidence that we've had back quite strongly, although not everybody agrees, is that yes, uh, this is economic, and that many of the very tall buildings in Christchurch over the years have really struggled to be economic anyway. So what we're saying is rather than some tall buildings and some short buildings bring the height level down, that'll make us all feel more comfortable because lots of people don't want to go back into tall buildings anyway, but it also brings the minimum heights up so that you get a much more comprehensive development in the city and um, I think that's a very exciting uh, look for Christchurch. It's something unique in New Zealand and rather unique in the modern world uh, but we do believe that it is economic and we want to have that discussion. You touched on having more schools in the city. Can you just elaborate on that a bit more? One of the things that we are looking at asking government to help with uh, in the draft plan is that 
Let's, if you live in the central city, you don't have to be bound by normal school zones. So as we've got a number of incentives built into the plan uh, to get business in and to uh, try to make it an exciting place and to try to get some uh, energy into the redevelopment of the city. And it would help us if we didn't have any zoning. But we also think that with a growing resident population, there are some great opportunities, not just for the schools that have been here in the central city, but to look at new schools as well. I remember going to Portland in the States where they've done a very successful rebuild of an old part of their city. And they thought initially just retirees or young couples with no kids would be focused on the urban style of living. And what they found is as those young couples with no kids got to the point where they wanted a family, that they didn't want to leave the urban area. So they're building new playgrounds and creating new schools. We're saying, well, actually, we're going to put playgrounds in here from the word go. We think that's important. And we also believe that education represents a tremendous opportunity for this city. We've got two great universities here, wonderful CPIT, and a reputation as being a good place of learning. Let's strengthen that. So I believe we'll see further investment in schools in the central city. So you think there's the, there will be the population to bring people and have them, have them in schools in the central city? Absolutely I do. I, and I, I think that what we've done is created some incentives. There are areas of Christchurch that you couldn't put residential buildings in before, which now you can. And so we're actually creating a heart for Christchurch City that has a number of amenities that people will want to come and visit, but by utilising what we call the activation of the streets at ground level, uh, we hope to uh, create small centres throughout the central city area, a few little local shops as well, as the hearts and hubs for redeveloping communities. The right amenities, the right style and access to the quality of life and quality of building design that we are going to be having in our central city area is actually a compelling mix. And more and more people are actually looking for an urban style of living provided it provides them with the things that they like. Great cafes, it's safe, um, there are uh, lots of things to do. You've got, a, you've got nightlife and discrete parts of the city where it doesn't interfere with uh, your lifestyle in a quieter uh, residential corner where you can walk to things, ride your bike to uh, your job uh, or walk to work, where you've got great medical facilities, great educational facilities and great recreational facilities. In other words, if we do our job well together, this is going to be the best place to live in Christchurch. Schools take up a lot of space, so where are we going to put them? I think we've got heaps of room. And if you look at the southern part of the inside the Four Avenues area, it's very, very low density. And if you actually get up in the air and look down on Christchurch, you'll find that quite often in the centre of the very big blocks that we have is a lot of underutilised bare space, car parks and so on. And we are opening up these areas with new laneways. They're an, an important uh, element of what we want to do in Christchurch to make it more accessible. But for example, you can see that uh, there are opportunities in the inside of blocks if you landscape them and if you have attractive urban design around them to also establish, for example, a, a small preschool or a, a small primary school. Uh, or indeed, as you cluster around the uh, innovation industries which we are expecting to want to cluster from say the Christchurch Hospital down through to the CIPT, CPIT area, uh, that in fact there's also going to be some great educational opportunities there. Imagine a high school, for example, uh, that was an international high school where people who were seeking entry to Canterbury University or Lincoln would come for that last year or last couple of years or maybe a full secondary education to line their language skills and their learning skills up with some of the greatest universities in the world. So we've got to use our imaginations. We need to have the kind of faith and optimism that we had in ourselves in those terrible early days that we had to go through, particularly after the 22nd of February. You know, we've got that ability. We shown, we've shown the world, I think, what we could do. And we need to continue to have that faith in ourselves and that belief in our future. Because uh, Canterbury as a province has a tremendous opportunity to grow, based around, for example, primary industries and education and research and a number of other areas. So I think we should be really confident. We know how beautiful this place is. 
and uh, we're going to build a city that actually reflects that in a truly sustainable 21st century way. I, I think it's going to be a pretty compelling package. A CBD is also somewhere to socialise in. What about nightlife, restaurants, nightclubs, that sort of thing? One of the things that we are proposing in the draft plan is that there, there should be some areas where you do have a bit of nightlife and we've put some special acoustic controls in there so that uh, when people have their fun in this quarter of or this part of the city, uh, first of all we know where that area is so we can all identify it uh, and secondly that that noise doesn't then transfer to other parts of the city because in order for an urban environment to work you've got to have high quality outcomes. It'll never be as quiet in the central city as it's going to be in some uh, leafy suburb. That's true. But then the people who come into the central city are also expecting to have a little more background noise. But what they don't want is a stereo thumping next door or above them. So the buildings have to be acoustically built to high standards and you have to control the areas where that 24 hour life we would like to see in this city can sit and, and exist in a, in a positive way. And yes, so there will be we hope 24 hour corners of Christchurch city, but they won't be sprinkled over the whole city, they would be in defined areas. That's what we are suggesting and that's part of what uh, this next process of feedback is all about. So it's like, it will be like it was, have this area set out here? Yep, yep, I think that we'll be setting out areas where we think that's appropriate and we'll be suggesting where those areas are in the uh, draft plan and, and obviously we're also putting alongside some new standards in terms of what we want by way of an outcome acoustically. Because, you know, you don't want to hear a stereo going at three in the morning. That's the last thing, a nightclub keeping you awake. And that has been an issue. And that's something that we also need to correct if we're to meet that goal of a sustainable quality place to live in this green city in a garden. You've spoken a lot about a green city and sustainability is really a, a word that gets thrown around a lot. Can you just tell me a little bit more about this? First of all, we're living in a whole new world. and that One of the great opportunities here in the tragic loss of that historical fabric, that much of it was built in a time when we didn't have the understanding around the need to thermally insulate, uh, about using materials that uh, didn't actually cause destruction in the immediate and local environment, about how we looked after rainwater, and how we could build truly safe buildings. And you know, one of the things we must never forget is that we have to build the safest city in the world here for us to have confidence as Christchurch people in our own place and for others to have that confidence as well. And we understand today what sustainability means and it, you know, in broad terms we want to build a city that doesn't reduce the options of people in the future, of our children and their children, that can live in harmony in an environmental way with the fragile environment that we now understand we all live in and doesn't add to the destruction of the planet which has occurred through not truly understanding some of humanity's interactions with nature. We can't shut that information out now. So we want to build a city that complies with what we know now about the need to be sustainable. That's why we've put incentives in the plan and we're suggesting that for example in the central core of the city you can build a six-story building as of right but if you meet higher uh, green standards and we've developed a special local Christchurch version of the kind of green star rating which is much less expensive uh, than the former green star system which could cost a lot of money. If you can build and get a sustainable well-designed building that also is a very green building you can get a bonus floor on that. It has to be set back uh, and fit the pattern of the city. So we're trying to incentivize but we also know that building green actually makes economic sense. And uh, Council's own building is a great example of that. You know, collects the rainwater, it uh, generates its own uh, electricity from waste gas. You know, we saved uh, one and a half million dollars a year in electricity costs by building a green building. It doesn't cost that much more up front. And the long term savings mean that for the building owners, uh, they have a more viable proposition. Uh, and for the tenants, they've got a building that meets their requirements in terms of what they want, their consciences, their beliefs, uh, and, and they generally rent for uh, a better rental than buildings that aren't green. So they're good at business investments, but more than that, uh, it's what we need to do because we know it's important now. 
And just finally, Mia Parker, you talk about the incorporation of water and light into our city. Can you tell us more about that? Well, some of the more touchy-feely uh, things would be uh, looking at uh, how we use water, because we think that water is one of the things that makes this island one of the greatest places on earth. I mean, and a tremendous supply of fresh water. We're aware of having to guard that, but we're also, also aware that we should honour that. And then how we use light in the city, not just for safety, because the city should be safe, but also how we can use coloured light in creative and innovative ways to paint our city. Like, you know, we've had a few bridges with a bit of coloured lighting underneath them. I think we have an opportunity now as we rebuild the city to encourage people to light buildings in creative ways. So not only is it a city in a garden, it's a city of light. And uh, that's going to be beautiful for us all to enjoy uh, and highlight the strengths of a new city, a city for the 21st century. We'll be back after the break chatting movies with John Hunter. Welcome back to City Life and finally on the program, movies with John Hunter, thanks to Hoyts. Thank you. Hello, Kinesia. Good to have you here. I've lost all my notes and it doesn't, it doesn't matter because I know matter. exactly what's happening in this segment. Good. What movies have you seen this week? Well, I saw Netherwood uh, and that's uh, the New Zealand International movie. Film Festival. In, part of the International Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, it's produced by Owen Black, stars Owen Black, uh, co-produced by Will Hall, starring Will Hall, and it's... Uh, set in Wipera in a fictitious town called Netherwood. I think Owen Black has been on City Life with uh, Pete Smith when I wasn't here one day. Yes. Too bad. Didn't Too get to bad. see him. Okay, the movies that I've seen this week. Something Borrowed. That's right. Have you seen this one yet? No, I haven't actually. I believe Kate Hudson's in it. She is. Yes. Was Matthew McConaughey in it as well? No, I, I believe he was not. <laughs> oh, wow. Why do you say that? Because uh, they've paired up quite a few times and she's sort of typecast for that sort of Aww. role. Poor Kate. But, um, and also I saw Bridesmaids for the second time. So you enjoyed both of them? Yep, I did. Now, this one here. Cowboys and Aliens. I thought you were actually going to go and see this one. I was, but we got snowed in. Mm. Disappointing. Yeah. Disappointing. That's with a. Uh, uh, oh, uh, who's who's in that? Craig. I want to say Craig David. No, no, Daniel Craig. <laughs> Daniel Craig. There we go. Craig David is not he a singer? But the one I really want to see, Glee, the three D concert movie. Because you're a a, a, a Gleeoid. Is that? Is I'm that a right? Gleeoid. What is it? Glee is um is the very de mm. definition of joy or um. Okay. Yeah, I, can't recall that, that quote right off the top of my head. But anyway, what are we looking at this week? I think uh, Billy week, T. James and... Uh... We have Billy T. James' T. Movie. Mm -hmm. where we've got a couple of American comedies, uh, The Change Up and uh, Crazy Stupid Love. OK. Tell yeah. me about Billy T. James, the T. t movie. The T. Movie, OK. This is uh, sort of a doco movie sort of thing on, on Billy T. James and his life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks pretty good. Should okay. we go to the trailer? Let's do that. Yeah. He's a reference point for New Zealand culture. He was the genuine article. Comes back here and just builds his own industry. We all thought we knew him, but we didn't. If you fellas are looking for trouble, fellas come to the right place. If you fellas are looking for trouble, come and sit on your face. <laughs> The Maori population in Cambridge was 2%. We've got 17 in our family, man. We put our mother on a pedestal, eh? Uh, we had to to keep the old man away from her, you know? So we were sort of brought up in a Pākehā society. This is your host, Dexter Fitzgibbons. Hang on to your mangle wurzels. You got that, honky? The Maori Volcanic Show was as slick as anything. And there was this chap there called William Taitoko in those days. He's such a natural. He could play anything. People weren't putting up signs saying clap, laugh, whatever. It was real laughter. When I get my back, I pinched it. <laughs> he shouted everybody. I'm pretty basic. I can live in a tent. I'd be quite happy to go back and pick watercress. I never saw a green vegetable pass his lips. He had a passion for fried chicken. The medical profession will not accept Maoris as organ donors. Why not? Because I want the bloody things back in a hundred years' time, man. <laughs> Looks 
good. That's, doesn't it? That's Looks funny. like a lot of fun. In fact, I've seen, I mean, we all saw the Billy T. James show, and, and there's a few sort of clips there that yeah. many people will see and think, Oh, I remember that. That was really quite funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. The change up. Tell the me about change this one. up. Well, this has got a couple of your uh, list actors in it. Tell me more. Jason Bateman. Yes. And Ryan Reynolds. Oh, in one movie. <laughs> You'll have to go and see that. <laughs> more than once, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they play brothers who um, they both sort of idealise each other's lives. And one night out drinking, they seem to swap bodies. I mean, how many movies have we seen this where they sort of suddenly <laughs> you're in a different body? Yeah. And that's what happens to these two guys. Funny. It's by the producers of The Wedding Crashes, so it's that sort of sort of American, sort of okay. funny, sort of awesome, naughty sort of movie. <laughs> Love I it. mean, and I watched the trailer. I've watched it about two or three times. And um, it looks a really good sort of fun sort of ride. So okay. should we go and have a look? Let's do that. Your turn. Oh, oh no. So what am I tonight? A burglar? Oh. Hello. How you like me now? Oh, How you like me now? Tell me about your women. I have been keeping company with a number of nice ladies. What is her name? That is Tatiana. Wow. I have to make her cry first, She's but gorgeous. it's worth it. Yeah, this right here is Brenda. Ooh. She wants it in Wheelbarrow, Arabian Goggles, yeah. the Arsenio Hall, the pastrami sandwich. I don't even know what these are. You're married. Good point. You're living the dream, Mitch. Having children, it's, it's like it's living with little mini drug addicts. You know, they're laughing one minute, and then they're crying the next, and then they're trying to kill themselves in your bathroom for no good reason. They're very mean and selfish, and they burn through your money, and they break... Guy, 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 come on. You know, I was just saying that I envy your life, man. I envy yours. I wish, I, wish I, I had your life. Mitch? Why well, am I in your apartment? Open the door! I knew it. For my life, or we were pissing in that fountain. We wish we had each other's lives. I was just trying to be nice. Oh my god! For the first time in your life, you're good looking, you're single. What's going on between us? It's crazy, but what's even more crazy is not to use it. Have we met? Hold on, you two guys should go out. Wait, what? How do you like working with Dave? I actually used to have kind of a crush on Dave. <laughs> No, but he's married, so obviously. Right, obviously, <laughs> obviously, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Super married. What do I tell Jamie when she wants to have sex tonight? You're not having sex with my wife, Mitch. She comes to me like a hurricane. A guy can only withstand so much. I am gonna ruin her. Oh my god. I need to cool it on the Thai food. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Don't back that thing up into me. I can't believe you come at me guns hot. <laughs> that looks good. Doesn't it? Oh, that looks really good. Funny. So that was a little surprise. I, I was sort of looking through what was coming up and um, sort of thought, oh, what is this? Yeah. yeah. When does that open? So that opens uh, today. Does it? Yeah. Fun. All right. Um, actually, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, that's opened. Why haven't we spoken about that yet? Well, we had a lot of movies happening about that time and <laughs> I sort of skipped over I it. I think you don't like ape movies. I, I just sort of do, but I mean, it's been done before. Skipped right over yeah. it. Interesting. We want to do new stuff. Okay, all yeah. right. Uh, crazy, stupid love. Okay, so now this starts next Thursday because I'm away next week. Hmm. I'm away, I pray, skiing and skiing. And... What does that mean? <laughs> Drinking, right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you yeah, anyway, make, make use of that snow while it's out there. And so anyway... We've got next week, Crazy Stupid Love, Steve Carell, uh, Julianne Moore, Ryan Gosling, um, Julianne Moore and um, Steve Carell, they're married, they right. separate. Steve Carell needs to sort of reinvent himself to go out and, and date and meet new people. Uh, he uses Ryan Gosling as the, he's the 30 something sort of it man. And um, look, I mean, if we look at the trailer, we'll know, we're we'll know about. what we're talking about. Right, let's do that. Yeah. Years of marriage and you have nothing to say? I'll just say it. I slept with someone. If Ooh, you keep cow. talking, but, I'm gonna get out of the car. I think the fact that I did it, it just shows how broken we are. Okay. How much, how much we really... Oh my God, Cal! You're getting a divorce.
divorce? Yeah. Amy heard you crying in the bathroom. We all thought it was cancer. Oh. Thank God, man. Yeah, just my relationship. <laughs> Hi, can I buy you a drink? Uh-huh. Let's get out of here. Want to get out of here? Yeah. What are you doing later? <laughs> I don't know. I do. There's lots of beautiful women in this bar, but I can't take my eyes off of you. It's time to go home. Oh, it's forward of you, but okay. Yeah. Should uh, I pull the car around? Have you been drinking? I'll drive. Hey, ladies man guy. Any tips of the trade? Your wife cheated on you because you lost sight of who you are as a man. Would you take that straw out of your mouth? It looks like you're sucking on it. <coughs> okay. You're sitting there with a Supercuts haircut, and you're wearing a 44 when you should be wearing a 42 regular. Credit card. Where are your wallets? Would you sleep with them? Jeez, God! Yeah, probably. You would? You gotta take control of your manhood, pal. Can you put on some clothes, please? Oh, I'm sorry, is this bothering you? Beautiful. You agree with that style tip? I did actually, yeah. yeah. Slim down. Define so, your body. <laughs> <laughs> Some really good movies coming out this week, isn't there? Yes, there is. All right, John, really good to see you. And uh, you actually, too. you won't be here next week. No, I In won't. Fact, I won't be either. I'm away for a few days, so just keep that between me and you. Okay. But um, we'll see you. <laughs> We're not going away together. No. All right, um, have a really good holiday. Thank and you I'll very catch much. with you um, two weeks' time. Okay. That is City Life for today. You can get in touch with us. You can email me, kanita at ctv.co.nz. You can call us, 3777-033, or you can write to us, PO Box 1100 Christchurch. Now, you can watch episodes of City Life on demand. All you need to do is go to ctv.co.nz and find the big YouTube logo. Click on that, and you'll find City Life there among the list. Click on that, and you'll find all the episodes there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.